Hello everybody, this is the last video in the Equilibrium series that I'm putting together. This is part four, and in this video we are going to be studying Le Chatelier's principle. So what is Le Chatelier's principle and what is it good for? So uh, the cartoon picture above is just a funny thing. Le Chatelier's principle, reducing stress of chemical systems. Now that's kind of ironic because you know in chemistry class there's a whole lot of stress i wish there was a way that we could we could use le chatelier's principle with our cells but in the case of what we're going to be doing in this video we're going to be looking at different factors that that cause stress and how le chatelier's principle can reduce that stress and so le chatelier's principle uh, le chatelier himself was a scientist that studied the effects of equilibrium when stresses were applied to them. His principle states that if a stress is applied to an equilibrium, that the position of the equilibrium will shift in order to relieve it. There are three types of stresses that can be applied to an equilibrium. First one is concentration. The second one is pressure. And the third one is temperature. So we're gonna be starting with the first one, which is concentration. So concentration is basically just changing the amounts of reactants and products and by altering the concentration of either the reactants or products, the stress, that, that will be the stress on the equilibrium that will cause a shift in the equilibrium to take place. So concentration is by far the easiest to predict what direction the equilibrium is going to shift. And so if we look at an example where you have CO2 gas reacting with water liquid, right, you form your equilibrium to produce carbonic acid. Now, if we increase the concentration of CO2 gas, well, which side of the equation is going to be affected? Well, where is, is the CO2 present? The CO2 is present as a reactant. And so since CO2 is present as a reactant, well, the left side is now going to be out of sync. It's going to be out of equilibrium with in relation to the product side. So as a result, it's going to shift towards the products to reduce that stress. So remember, an equilibrium is a position where the concentrations are remaining constant. They aren't changing. And so once you add in a, a species and you offset that balance, now the equilibrium has to reposition itself. The way it's repositioning itself, in this case, it shifts to the right to produce more carbonic acid to lower the amount of CO2 that was introduced into the system. So now the opposite could be held, said about if you decrease the concentration of CO2 gas. Well, if you take it away, what you end up doing is you're removing that component from the system. Now you have an empty space. So what the equilibrium is going to do is it's going to shift back towards the reactants to reintroduce that component back into the system. You know, yes, it's going to cause a decrease in the concentration of H2CO3, but that's just part of the, the, the principle, what Le Chatelier says. He's just talking about the fact that, yes, if you take away or you add, you're going to cause a shift to take place because you're going to upset the equilibrium. It's kind of like a person pushing you. If a person pushes you one way or another, you're going to counterbalance that 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 force that's being applied to you so so concentration all right this these are two ways that you can do this uh another thing we could do is so let's say we decrease the carbonic acid all right so h2 co3 so we decrease the carbonic acid well if you take out the carbonic acid now you are you're removing that component from the equilibrium so what's going to happen it's going to have to shift towards the right to bring that back into equilibrium. 
think about a soft drink. It's the most common example that you can that 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 you can come across. So in the bottle, you have your drink. On top, you have a cap. Once you remove that cap, what do you do? You hear a, a hissing sound. What's happening is, is the gas is escaping. What you've done is you've opened that system and you've caused a stress to be added on that system. Well, when you take that cap and you put it back on, over time, that CO2 that you just released is now going to come out of the solution and it's going to fill the space that's above the, the liquid until it reaches equilibrium. And every time you take that cap off the soda pop, what will happen is you're going to have to reestablish equilibrium and what happens to a drink over time, that soda pop usually turns flat. It never stays crisp the entire span of its life. It's always, it's constantly losing the CO2 but it's because it's trying to reestablish that equilibrium. And this is the application of Le Chatelier's principle. So concentration is the first thing. Second thing is pressure. Pressure, uh, this only applies if gases are present. So only gases. So that's one detail here. Only gases. And there are different number of moles of gas on each side of the equation. So you have to look at both sides of the equation. Now we can continue with that example we were just looking at where we have this equilibrium. So you, find, you only have one gas here, which is on the left hand side. And if I increase the pressure, that, now this is how you, you don't really, you don't add in CO2. That's dealing with concentration. Here we're going to either increase the pressure or we're going to decrease the pressure. So in this case here, you're looking for the gases. So on the left hand side, you have one mole of gas. On the right hand, you have zero moles. So if I increase the pressure, I'm going to stress the left side because that's where the gas is. Remember, pressure affects gases only. So if you increase the pressure, what you're doing is you're adding stress on the left hand side you're going to cause it to shift to the right if i decrease pressure the equilibrium is going to shift it back to the left it's going to bring back in that co2 so that way it helps to rebalance that equilibrium so we looked at an example in our past video where we have pcl3 plus co2 is an equilibrium with pcl5 yet another example where you have gases and these are all gases. It's a little different equilibrium. So now how many gases do you have on the left here? You have two moles of gas. Where you only have one mole of gas on the right hand side. So if I increase the pressure. Well there's more moles of gas on the left hand side. It's going to shift to the right. And if, it's, if you decrease the pressure. You're going to shift to the left. Because it's always going to go towards the greater moles of gas. Remember pressure only affects gases. So you have to pay attention to which side has more moles of gas. Now, let's look at one more example here. Now, all three of these are gases. If I increase the pressure, I have to look at both sides. Well, the left side has two moles of gas. The right side has two moles of gas. They're equal. Increase in pressure doesn't make a difference because they're balanced so no change will be observed here if i decrease the pressure it doesn't matter it's still no change because they're equal moles of gas on both sides the only time that pressure is going to make a difference is when you have a gas and there's different number of moles of gas on reactants versus products now the last is temperature so temperature is going to be a little bit well easier harder depends on the what the way you understand so let's take for example it's a, a combustion reaction all right so the combustion reaction produces co2 plus water now it also produces heat so delta h would be something negative i'm just going to make a number here 487 kilojoules 
So this here, this negative tells me that heat is a product. So that's why I wrote heat into the equation. So temperature, if you increase temperature, what you're doing is you're adding in heat. So if you're adding in heat, well, guess what? You're affecting the products. You're adding the stress on the product side. So what direction is it going to shift? It's going to shift back to the left. The, the, the hardest part with understanding the temperature part is knowing what your delta H is. So you got to understand whether you're dealing with an exothermic or endothermic reaction. If you have exo, your delta H is going to be negative. If you have endo, your delta H is going to be positive. So in this case here, if you're dealing with exo, it's negative. That means that your heat is going to be a product and the opposite is true for endo. This will be a reactant. This just helps to sort of simplify the what what's going on. So now another example would be the Haber process. So the Haber process, say the delta H is equal to negative 43 kilojoules. So what's that tell you? This tells you that the, the reaction is exothermic. That means that it's releasing heat as a product. So if I increase the temperature, well, guess what direction is the equilibrium is going to shift? It's going to shift back to the left. If you, if you decrease the temperature, it's going to shift to the right. Now, this is important. There's a couple of details that we don't that we don't know that I haven't told you, but one of those details are, in order for this reaction to happen, it has to be under a high temperature condition. So initially, when you only have the two reactants present, they're going to react at high temperature. They have to. That you have to have the system at a high temperature. When I say high temperature, I'm talking about four, five, six hundred degrees Celsius. Pretty hot. Now, once the reaction starts, it's going to start establishing that equilibrium. Now, when you talk about a stress, if you introduce that when you're adding in heat, well, and the, and the system comes into equilibrium, and you're adding in this extra heat, well, what you're going to do is you're going to shove the reaction back to the left where, where you just came from. Now, if you're trying to make money by producing ammonia, you got to find a way to where you can cause the reaction to continuously produce ammonia but still have that high temperature and so what's happened here and scientists have developed this you have two different systems now these systems are connected together all right this is where your main reaction is taking place on this side here you have a cooled system so what's happening is it's 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 going in a counterclockwise direction as the reaction produces that ammonia it's it's being pulled into another portion where then it's being cooled off because once the ammonia is produced it's it's not you don't have to worry about the heat being there so they pull off the ammonia and they cool it down at the same time so by pulling out the heat and taking away the ammonia what they're doing is they're forcing this reaction to go towards the products continuously so that way we always are producing ammonia and then there's, a, there's never a point where a stress is added on to the equilibrium and causes it to go backwards because you don't want that stress when you're trying to produce ammonia so that it, it just creates a problem especially if you're trying to make money from that so so these are three different factors that affect that, that Le Chatelier talks about concentration pressure and temperature so what we're going to do next is we're going to look at another example and we're going to work some problems based off of that example okay in this problem we're going to have four parts to answer and part a says if silicon is added to the equilibrium how might the position of the equilibrium change so uh, the, the the problem the equilibrium is silicon reacted with hydrochloric acid producing silicon and hydrogen chloride plus hydrogen gas. So we have to focus on the silicon and just determine how might the position change. 
So if you add more silicon to the equilibrium, what do you think will happen to it? Well, let's, let's look at two different things. Let's understand what Le Chatelier's principle says, and then let's pay attention to the physical state of the silicon. Chatelier's principle says if you add more concentration, it's going to shift the equilibrium to the opposite direction. So right off the bat, we see that silicon is reacted. If we add more in, it should shift it to the right. But there is a catch. Silicon is not a gas or aqueous. It's actually a solid. And solids are not affected. And they're not included in the equilibrium expression. So the answer is no change will take place. It's a trick. It's a tricky question because you have to pay attention to the physical state. Now, part B says if you wanted to produce more Silicon hydrogen chloride, what methods according to Le Chatelier's principle could you apply? Okay, so concentration is an obvious one. You could add in more HCl and produce it to the right. You could pull out silicon hydrogen chloride and it will shift it more to the right. So there's a so concentration is the first one. Second one is pressure. Would pressure make a difference? Okay, so looking at the left hand side, you have three moles of gas. Looking on the right hand side, you have two moles of gas. So there's, there's not an even distribution, so pressure would make another difference. Now, if you want to produce more silicon hydrogen chloride, you could increase the pressure. All right, so, so, so pressure is another thing. So you can, you not only do you have concentration, but now you also can use pressure. The last thing is temperature. Could you use temperature? Well, we see that delta H is negative 483.6 kilojoules. That means that it's an exothermic reaction. So if you pull temperature, if you decrease the temperature, you pull heat away, you're going to shift it to the right. So there are three factors. They're all three. You can use concentration, you can use pressure, and you also can use temperature. Now letter C says, how might the equilibrium be affected if aqueous hydrogen chloride was added? All right, so let's find HCl. It's a reactant. All right, it says aqueous hydrogen chloride. So notice it says aqueous here. That should be AQ. What physical state is HCl? It's a gas. So there will be no effect here. So no change. And letter D says write the energy into the equation as if it were a product or reactant. So we just talked about the fact that it was exothermic. So heat is a product here. How might this affect the equilibrium's position? So it's not that the heat is going to affect it. It's the fact that if you increase or decrease the temperature will make a change in the equilibrium's position. If you increase the temperature, what you're doing is you're adding in more heat so you're going to cause the equilibrium to shift back to the left now if you decrease the temperature you're going to remove heat and you're going to cause it to shift back towards the right so these are just examples of how you use Le Chatelier's principle in answering specific questions that's related to his principle so if you have any questions or comments please comment below and thank you for watching and that concludes the Equilibrium series.